on the middle order, we're at uh, 537. Principal Barshevsky would like to say a few words. Yeah, um, uh, it was with great sadness that on May 4th, 2019, earlier this month, that uh, staff member, speech and language pathologist, Carolyn Burns, uh, tragically lost the life of her daughter, Megan, to senseless gun violence. Um, the Burns family moved to our community in, in Deerfield in 2004 and uh, Megan attended Deerfield Elementary School and Frontier and then in 2015 she enlisted in the Navy to pursue a career um, in healthcare. Uh, she was stationed in Naples, Italy and then most recently was working at the um, Naval Medical Center in Portsmouth, uh, Virginia. Um, so just an absolute tragedy and uh, our com entire community is heartbroken. Um, I showed up to this district in 2006, spring of 2006, and Megan was in fourth or fifth grade at Deerfield Elementary School at the time. And one of my first memories of Megan was that she had the most beautiful, quiet smile that you would ever seen and that just continued. Um, and she was just an incredible young woman whose life was, life ended way too short. Um, so our heart and prayers and thoughts go out to the Burns family during this, this really difficult time. Um, and we're sending as much love as possible to, to Carolyn, her husband Matt, and Megan's younger sister Kylie. Thank you. Yeah. All right, um, let's see. If I hear a motion to uh, leave the minutes. I'll make a motion to leave the minutes. Outstanding. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? I can't vote because I wasn't there. Yeah. So we got 3 0. Um, yep. Yeah, 3 0 2. Uh, financial statements so you Hi there. I apologize for being late I don't wait for the warrants and there's one more voucher for school and to refund coming so oh, but uh, if you want to give me at least what we had so we start with the warrants themselves I have a total of eight warrants absent the one that's on its way for a total of ninety six thousand eight hundred fifty four dollars and seventy six cents Electronic Lord. Yeah. I did make you a paper copy today. Thank you. 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 April and then at the end of all of that is a forecast for where we will stand. Um, we've done sort of a uh, hand encumbrance, as it were, of uh, salaries, so we know what we have left in certain lines and what we don't. And if um, I'm able to move some of those, uh, move some funds around to cover some deficit lines, uh, so that they look whole. Um, my biggest concern right now is for the substitute line. Um, you know, we are. What function is that? That's uh, 2325. Um, right now it is whole, um, but uh, it is still incurring charges faster than what the balance is in there, which is 34, 44, 47. So. Um, we're still looking at you know where we can find some funds to cover to the end of the year because um, the end of the year tends to be a heavy a heavy duty substitute usage uh, period. So um, we are certainly keeping an eye on that. Um, you know the good news is that you are looking um, 
healthy, um, you know, at this point uh, to the end of the year. I have set up uh, in order to transfer off the uh, food service director salary into um, the food service account, I had to set up a fund within our accounting system to be able, because you can't do a one-sided transaction as it were to offload expenses. So I have done that, and um, I know the town, of, uh, the town uh, accountant is in on Thursday, so my plan is, since I'm, Monday's a holiday, to be here on Thursday so I can actually pop in and have a face-to-face -face conversation with him about some other changes that we've made, again, to relieve the pressure off of school choice. Uh, and this would, again, relieve pressure off the, the main budget so that we could, again, continue to relieve pressure on school choice uh, and hopefully leave it with as healthy a balance as we possibly can moving into fiscal to money. So um, that's, that's my goal right at this particular point in time. So, um, so we are still monitoring lines very, very closely just to make sure that uh, everything is in, in a healthy position um, at the end. So. Do you have any overall concern that you'll be able to meet your goals? I don't at this particular point in time. Like I said, the one line that I am very mindful line. of is the, sub, is, the, is the general substitute line. Um, that's the one that, that gives me the most cause for concern. But if we get, the, particularly if we get the, you know, once I can get the food service director's salaries offloaded into uh, the school lunch account, um, that will ease some pressure, and I think we'll be able to easily meet whatever expenses get incurred to the end of the year at that point. There was uh, uh, issues in terms of the um, getting the reimbursement from the federal and state uh, uh, for the uh, school lunch mm -hmm. program. Has that been straightened out? Yes, and are has. they coming back? Are they now being done on a timely basis? Yes. Um, what happened, I discovered when I talked with the food service director, was that the former food service director, evidently there was a problem with the audit mm -hmm. of the books. And so there was some things that need to be taken, needed to be taken care of. Those were taken care of in late March. And so late March, things started to come back in. So we're now, we're now current? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And can you maybe... Have maybe at some point just provide a balance in the account now that we're back current so we're sure about how we're doing. Sure, and I think part of us being able to set up that fund on our side of the ledger as well is going to help us be able to monitor that through right. the end of the year and then of course obviously pass it off onto the new business manager so that she's got a better tool to monitor what's going on um, than we currently have. So that again will provide that internal control that really needs to happen with those funds. Great. So, um, Thank you. That's, that's the goal. Yeah, that, I mean, I did want to say one thing publicly to uh, thank the community for stepping up and agreeing to vote the override. It's going to make a huge difference this coming year. And I understand it's a sacrifice, but uh, greatly appreciated and should really make a difference. Uh, and uh, so we have a new business manager coming in, and you're getting ready for the pass down. Yes, um, she's going to be doing some part-time uh, transition days in June, and then she will be fully here in July, as will we. So um, there will be you know, a two-month period of a transition of knowledge, and certainly, um, you know, I've told uh, Darius this already that you know, there's no hesitation to pick up the phone and give us a shout if you need something. Well, she, you, you're, the software you're using is proprietary, or yes, and so what will her situation be as far as what software she uses? She will get a, uh, oh, we use your software. Okay. So we use your, your accounting software, the district's accounting program. So oh. it is a proprietary program, but she, um, as far as I know, is being set up with access that mirrors both Mark's and my access right now. So you're, for example, you changed this year to include a picture of what you call the all funds budget rather right. than just the town part, which was very useful. Mm -hmm. And will she, Will that continue? Um, we can certainly share that information with her and how she wants to, to move forward from there. Um, but you know, that's certainly something that TMS does, and we don't mind sharing okay. copies of that. Because it, it seems to me that that was useful. Mm -hmm. So it would be nice if it continued. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Any other discussion? Um, I guess I got a question that is, has financial implications, and um, 
their the latest uh, numbers on the school choice are show a greater number than we've had, and mm -hmm. um, I gathered that. Uh, uh, well, maybe I just Ben, do you want to sort of explain? Sure. Since the beginning of the school year, we've had 13 students who started off as Sunderland residents move out of town, but continue at SES. Um, some of that, some of those moves took place right at the beginning of the school year, a um, few months in, six months in, um, a month, uh, a month ago. Um, so, and some of that money coming in that Sunderland would receive is prorated based on the number of days that they um, they have been at the school. Uh, some of those students are going to finish out the year here at Sunderland and then um, continue uh, their elementary schooling in the town that they moved to. So as far as the exact school choice numbers that we're anticipating from this school year to next, we're, we're not 100% sure, but we're not um, anticipating a major uh, increase or decrease either way. But for this year, I mean, one of the concerns that I had back when we were going through the budget February and March was that even with the lower, significantly lower number that we were being told by the state that we were going to get for school choice revenue for the current year, that still was dependent upon how our actual numbers went for the current year. And so there was a fair bit of unknown still about how that might turn out, and this seems to at least, if anything, be a, 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 a somewhat positive impact. If, if there were to be a silver lining in the school choice situation, this right. would be it. Right. But it's not much. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah. And what they will do is they will, because um, usually there's a dip in, in March, so they'll do a little bit of true up. In, uh, I, I don't follow you. Hmm? I, I didn't follow. They will do a dip in into the data in March just to see what our school choice numbers look like and there'll be a sort of a full-time equivalency true up. That will happen, um, but then October 1 of next year will be when there might be, if there's an uptick in students, that would um, be a true up that would happen, that you would get that December adjustment. So, um, like we got the negative right. December adjustment. So, what happens year. is the state looks at the numbers August 1, I mean, October 1, the October 1 report. Understand, we get those right. numbers in December. Right. They then look at it again in March, right. and then we get those numbers in June ish mm -hmm. about what our, their new numbers are. So. We're waiting on those new numbers. Right. If that makes, does that make sense? There's two kind of check-ins when you look at the school. Yeah, choice. I'm. And we build budgets off the December one. I'd like. <clears throat> I'll pursue this more at another time. Sure. I, I've got some concerns, and but I don't want to. You know, we got so much time tonight, sure. so. Okay. But you don't. Do you have any sense in terms of? I mean, we've advertised for openings for school choice for this, you know, for mm -hmm. potential additions for classrooms mm -hmm. where we have the space. And do you have any sense of how that's going? Yeah, right now we have um, three school choice students um, registered for kindergarten. Um, we have another school choice student coming in in first grade and possibly one in second or third grade. Um, so not huge numbers. And is that, is in. this, are we at the point where those decisions have pretty much been made, or are there a sense that there's still families that are figuring out what they want to do? I think there's still families figuring out um, what they want to do. Uh, for instance, late last week we were contacted by another family, so I think there's still still time for other students to possibly um, apply for school choice. Okay, thank you. Yeah, June 1st is when some of the area, I'm thinking Amherst does their uh, lottery. Mm -hmm. And so we could possibly get spin off of those who don't get into the Amherst lottery might come over here. Okay. So. Yep. No further discussion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, I probably should have done this also at the beginning of the meeting, but with I just, actually I have this from Donna, uh, the Executive Secretary of the Darrow, as, as you know, suggested inclusion in the minutes. She always writes up draft minutes to help me write these things. And the first one here we sort of skipped over, even though I know it's not on the agenda, but it just says, the committee welcomed new member yeah. Jessica Corwin. I was thinking exactly that. And yeah. I would just like to, again, welcome her. Um, 
as we, we say goodbye to, to Doug and all the years that he put in service here, I am delighted to have Jessica here because she's both a parent and a teacher in another district and a enthusiastic and active member of the school community. I believe been a member of the PTO for some time. Helped with the PTO a lot? No. Helped with the PTO a lot too, so we definitely got a, a, a great addition to the committee. And just want to make that welcome. So. Cool. Yes. Glad Thank to you. have you. Thank you. All right. And it doesn't seem to have uh, public comment. <laughs> None? Okay. Um, discussion items. Comprehensive school health services grants. All right. <clears throat> so, mm -hmm. this is so, basically, what <clears throat> We receive the um, the comprehensive school health service grant. We applied for it. You want short? We need one more. Um, Do you have one? I think it's different. <clears throat> so there was a, there was one that was part of the. Oh, no, I got one. Um, so as a district, we applied for this, um, and um, the school nurse, our nurse current list nurse leader uh, Meg Birch, who's the Conway School nurse, applied for this grant. Um, for $70,000 to basically, and I kind of gave you a, a handout of the scope of services of the grant, but basically um, we have single nurses um, in multiple buildings and um, the nursing and health services demands has gone up each year. And so we're kind of behind on some systems and we're providing adequate care, but things could be um, done better. So we applied for this grant. We received the grant, but we only received 55000 um, and as you can see, there's a page of what I handed out that kind of breaks down the, uh, the revised budget of the grant. Um, basically, the state looked at our, our SES numbers and um, our, our, our standing of our, of our district. They looked at Frontier. They didn't look at the total district, which is very different when you break out the elementary as it goes way up. Um, and then they said that basically they called it an error on our part that it should have stated such that the district was comprised in this fashion. It's up to interpretation if the district was clearly, you know, our side felt it, that it was it stated it there and we should know how our districts are somewhat set up. Um, so we tried to appeal. We did not get the full grant, but we got the 55000 So where this is important and why we bring grants to the school committee is this is one of those grants that's set up for the federal government that has after the first three years of the grant, the fourth grant will be put, the salary of this person will be put onto the local budget. Okay, currently we have a nurse leader that um, gets a stipend of about just over $10,000, I think it's $12,000 um, for this position. So we would be getting basically $120,000 over the four years of this grant but we're gonna to have to come up with about $40,000 in the fourth year. Meanwhile, we have a stipend that's $12,000 per year. Technically, if we put that aside and use that as a savings, we could pay for this. So money-wise, you know, this grant, and then what happens at the end of the four years, you can reapply for an additional two years, um, and then it's two years and two years after that, so two two-year increments. Um, so basically, it's, when you're looking at it, they're trying to get you on because they want to see these nurse leaders because of all the moving parts of <clears throat> um, what's happening in health services and schools. Um, they want to see these more permanent positions. Clearly, that's why they're you know, putting this grant together. Um, but that's kind of the hook. After that fourth year, we can decide whether or not you know we continue with the grant. Um, technically, you could decide anywhere along the way, but it's a small. It's Massachusetts is where this is kind of coming out of. So. Um, you know, it's a small playground, so you gotta be careful about taking money and then leaving before you hold up to your end of the commitment. So, because originally when I first signed into this, with learning about the grant, I was like, oh great, if it doesn't work after two years, we can drop out, you know, two years of $70,000, we can get a lot done, um, that kind of thing. Um, but really, we really need to be, unless we have a significant financial hardship, be signing on for four years of this grant. Um, Meg came out to the Frontier meeting and kind of went through, I didn't tell her to come to all Five meetings. I just thought it was a, it's a lot of resource and time for someone to do, and I thought I could handle it. So, um, but she kind of gave an overview of that thing, um, of the of the grant of it, total. 
So what would also happen is that you know Conway um, would then get she would if we move forward with this she would take on as a nurse leader already she would take on this um, kind of the, this comprehensive grant so it should be kind of a school district wide and we get a part time position up in Conway. So um, so that's basically in a nutshell what this is about. I could you just run through the numbers again because it's sort of lost. Sure. Away. So you have a numbers page. Um, ah, okay. So basically, the nurse point five of this position is thirty eight thousand five hundred. Okay, and then we would do, and so basically, it would become a um, the nurse leader would be part time nurse leader, part time. Um, okay. Um, part-time nurse in Conway. Currently, if we sign on to this grant, the first three years of the grant, you can use the money from the grant to pay for the salary. In the fourth year, the district has to pick it up. And so, basically, so this is this so is district-wide. District-wide. So, so what's the Sunderland's, impact on Sunderland? Sunderland's share is seventeen percent. No. For FY20? FY20, a little bit. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's a five school, so it's going to be our basic percentage. It's your basic percentage. Yeah. Of so, Sunderland's, hold on just a moment, and I can give you that. <coughs> what did you say the stipend was for the position? 12. 12. Yeah. So, Sunderland's share would be 16.76%. Okay. So, not quite, roughly 10,000. One six, yeah. I mean, there's certainly been times I can remember in the past, whether it's to do with the school or with other departments in town, where this is a standard thing. There used to be a thing with the police, you know, they give you the money for three years and then it falls away. And yeah, it's great, you get to have a free police officer, okay, for a while, but then mm -hmm. all of a sudden you got to pay for it. Right. And it's hard to take it and then to drop it. And so, you know, are you getting yourself into a situation where you're you know, whether you're getting a commitment to the person or you're getting, you know, it just gets a situation where all of a sudden it's like, okay, are we go in there and saying, well, this used to be paid for by grant, but now it's in the budget. And that's the kind of stuff that sort of tips people it's off. It's how they hook you. It sort of tips people you. off. And but, so, and so it, I, you know, and I went back and forth on this as well. Um, and I've kind of said this to each committee um, as I'm kind of going, you know, through the, the circuit, so to speak, is that I was kind of conflicted at first about should we invest? But in talking with, um, Sarah and Louise who deal with grants in and out, they said this is always the hook. They're always going to try to, to hook you in on the end. The idea here is that you know, you're basically going to get you know, close to, in the end, about $180,000. You know, because you figure 55000 over four years is $220,000, and we're going to have to end up paying $40,000 in that final year, so you minus that. So you're talking about about $180,000 that we're leaving on the table. And being able to you know, improve our health services delivery to students. And so if we're, they, you know, they, they, the grant's monitored, so it's got its own monitoring system that we're going to have to make sure that we're meeting the goals of the grant um, as it's written. And after the fourth year, and I was asked by the Frontier Committee to make sure that it gets brought back in the fourth year to have a discussion about, it doesn't just kind of go quietly into the budget and nobody gets to watch it. And the, because we have to reapply for the grant after four years, it will be back in front of the school committees again. Um, moving forward. So I think it's that kind of checks and balances. The fact that we currently, we don't, also in that fourth year, we get the $55,000 as well, but we just can't use it on salary. So we still have that money that we can shift budgets around, you know, if we're in a tight spot, depending on the school, but for you know, materials, professional development and supplies um, and technology, you can kind of look through the different things. I mean, that 55,000 is gonna end up going to those other areas. We could shift that off of other budget lines to make up some of that difference. But there will, I mean, I don't want to be, in the ideal world, we'll get it all off, but there may be some cost in that fourth year to the school. So that's but in years one through three, there's no cost. There's no cost. In fact, there's saved. Because, because the nurse stipend position will come off this. And the nurse stipend position, that 12,000 is currently someone's paying one. It's still paying for that, that percentage of that 12,000. That so 17 that's percent of $2,000. About $2,000. Yeah. So, and is it such that, is this the kind of thing where, 
It's the old thing, you know, if you get a grant that's going to run out after a certain amount of time, the idea is that you then apply it to expenses that are also can be time limited. And, you know, normally that's easy if you're doing something. I mean, we got that silly little rural aid grant or something like that, but then the point was don't spend it on anything that's going to be a continuing kind of expense. Um, for this, is there any of this stuff that can be done that will basically, you know, you say you're falling behind, is there, is there things that can be done that won't need to be done forever, but can sort of, you know, Yes, I mean, I, I think that the idea... Am I making that, sense? Get you, you know, get a lot of stuff taken care of, right. but then don't need to necessarily be there three, be four years the grants, down the road. Yeah, yeah part of the grant is looking at our systems and right. how we're, you know, from tracking information and tracking services and providing services to students who are transitioning from programs in and out of school and putting in systems in place takes a lot of time and energy, right. and that's what this grant's going to do. But so once you've got that... Once you have it, the need for it, and I agree, the need for it in year... When we look at this in year four... We may say we have a stronger systems in place and we can transition away from the ground. And yet you're still going to have the problem of you've got a person there that, you know, what are you going to do with? Well, right now, so this is the, the way it's set up right now is that the person's a part-time, we'd be hiring a part-time nurse. And so basically we'd bump out nursing. I guess I don't understand the person. So the person right now is a full-time nurse in Conway. Right. And... Um, she would then go to 0.5 in Conway, 0.5 nurse leader, and we're going to hire a 0.5 nurse in Conway to take her place. Okay, and so then if we decided to extricate ourselves... After four years, then we'd have to let the part-time part -time person go. But the full-time person would then go back... Go to back it. to that position. Okay. And then we'd have to have some sort of... Go back to the old stipend model of a nurse leader um, because it, there is a, a function that has to happen. I mean, I assume you had similar questions at Frontier, right? Mm -hmm. About how to, I mean, I just, I just, I've sat at selectman meetings and heard any number of times about, you know, this is, this is how you get yourself into right. problems. You know, it all starts out sounding good, and then at a certain point, it's like, okay, you know, now, okay. It's, it's, it is. I mean, it's the, it's the name of the game, and I think you have to, you have to have the attitude that you're having right here in the sense of, we have to watch it. We got to make sure we don't get suckered into it. We got to see if this is a good deal. And we got to use it as much as possible for one time things that this will give us the opportunity to get done right. that aren't uh, permanently demanding of that same level of, of personnel. Right. That's for man and that's a management yep. question. Okay. So what are you looking for tonight? Oh. You have to vote to approve. Tonight. Tonight. Just to dive into the details a little bit, what are the consultants? Am I probably supposed to know what SNAP training is? Um, SNAP training is the software that, so they use a different um, student information system for um, health, and so that's additional training there. The consultants, when you look at the scope of services, there's a lot of um, looking at what other districts are using um, mm -hmm. and training to do what other schools are doing from the full list of, um, you know, looking at health educators and um, you know, different kind of screening and all the lot of professional development was in there. When we originally did it, that number was much higher. That number was around 20,000. Uh -huh. And that's where we basically made the largest cut from to take care of, to make this, okay. to get that 55 number. So, um, you know, it's the idea of looking at different programs. And, and within that, you write under consultants kind of a major heading that you also could um, pay for subs to have nurses leave to go somewhere that would be paying under that consultant line okay. um, as well. And so that's where some of that 7,000 will be. We'll be able to give some, you know, Nurse Jeannie here to give her some free time. You're paying for subs so that she can do, coordinate her own files, get training and get the, you know, either data and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. So that all kind of falls in that line. And so this may give us an effort to streamline those systems as well and maybe work towards cost savings overall three to five years going forward, how to streamline the system, how to make it? I, I, it's definitely anything that's more efficient is yeah. going to be cost savings. I couldn't tell you what, like, if we do this, it's going to equal this. No, but, but anything would this more be efficient. like an effort toward in that regard as well? Yeah, I mean, right now there's a lot of um, repetitive things that are happening in multiple schools, maybe not done efficiently, efficiently time-wise. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're having more and more students with medical needs. I mean, mm -hmm. um, when you have multiple students with diabetes in the school, the amount of blood sugar checks that you're doing a day, how you're tracking that, um, you know, education for those students. And then if you go through the, all the mental health 
you know, that we're seeing, I mean, we're seeing a spike in behaviors, which is also is going to result in the spike of, you know, I hate to say it, but medi medication administration to students and all that kind of stuff, and who's monitoring all that, and monitoring those who are monitoring that kind of stuff, and so all kind of within there. Well, and just with, with the, <clears throat> the structure of the nurse leader position right now, it's, it's not feasible for Ms. Birch to collaborate with Nurse Jeannie, right? Because she's in Conway, Nurse Jeannie's here. This will allow that to happen. And the nurse leader will be able to go from school to school. A huge part of the nurse's um, responsibility is entering data into SNAP, whether it's for a bloody nose or something, you know, a, a fall off the monkey bars. Um, and that, so the data collection piece is a very important aspect and component of the job. Um, and, and at times we have had subs come in to take care of the, the student body so that information can be entered in. And then the nurse leader would then be able to come to Sunderland and provide that sub while that while this is happening. And that data is mandated? It's yeah. 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 Right. And a lot of that money we, so we just want to say is it's better report the more Medicare we get, it goes to town. Yeah, is that, are we gonna, will this help with our efforts there to, It'd be better, I mean, better if record keeping on that's going to be being able to file for four more money. So technically right. there would be, unless things are, and I don't know, I'll be honest with you, I don't know the efficiency of our Medicare, Medicaid reporting within the school. And this is, I know certainly there was about $50,000 of was this year, mm -hmm. was in that number range for Sunderland. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know if we're missing hours or if that is pretty accurate where we're at, but mm -hmm. anytime you're, you're bettering systems, you're going to be more accurate. Right. Yeah. It's tough to have a pulse on that. Yeah, you. but this would help. Yeah, because I think that's a. I mean, that's a significant amount about money that is going back to the town, and that mm -hmm. you know, to the, the extent that we can do a better, make sure we're doing as good a job there as possible, then that's what we ought to be doing. Yep. Okay. So it's the, it's the nurse from Conway will be half time there. She. That's the current plan, but this is not contingent on that plan. I just want to say we don't. We don't build, we're not buying, we're not doing grant based on staffing, but that is the plan that I have moving forward for next year. Okay. I just, I just want, you know, yeah, yeah, I'm not that, sure I'm just, you never, you never put to... a, a name into a policy because right. that person has the right to. Uh, so a, 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 a nurse from one of the four elementary schools would go half time. They are, that person is currently getting a $12,000 stipend to, to do that. That stipend goes away or continue, goes away. We hire half time. So this 38.5 is for the new nurse manager? Correct. Okay. And then after four years, we have to pick up this 38? The four, in the fourth year, we have to pick up that 38 with plus inflation, inflation on that. So right. I'm saying 40. Um, Regardless, then we'd have to go back to this extra 12 right here. If we just went back to the old model, we decided if not. If we decided to go back to the old model, okay. then you'd be looking at the stipend again. We'd have to do some sort of, we'd have to look at what that role would be. Right. And all those yeah. numbers are 16-ish percent. Yeah, right. Yeah. right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. okay. Yep. So I guess I'll make a motion to approve the policy, because I assume you need approval from all five towns for That's it to go forward. Mm -hmm. That's correct. I'll make a motion to approve the policy as presented. I'll second it. Yeah. Yeah. All in favor? All right, thank you. This is the uh, voucher that was uh, promised for our student activities. Can we skip, Mr. Chair, can we skip number B for now and put our, um, it's required executive session? Let's do that. And put all our executive sessions at the end? Yay. Because mm -hmm. um, there is no vote coming out of the executive session. Um, so, discussion of the, uh, the evaluation of the superintendent. Um, I had a long discussion at the last couple of school committee meetings of just because I kind of bounced around. It probably was something that was just should have been discussed at our joint meeting, but our joint meeting was, was full there. Um, um, we've had a lot of joint meetings with you know, staffing changes and that kind of stuff. Um, basically, what I'm proposing to do and getting feedback along the way is this year, I'm going to try in June to, um, with the help of Judy, Judy, who's given me a superintendent evaluation that was done online in her last position or, or, or where she worked, um, is doing an online 
trying to follow the standards. Um, and I'll pass out. I didn't make copies of this just because it gets paper hungry, but you can kind of pass it, look, or take a look through. Basically, that's the. Um, it's a Google form. It's a Google form of what the current superintendent evaluation is. Um, the feedback I've gotten at um, is really mixed in the sense that school committee members are overwhelmed by what is asked mm -hmm. for this. There are areas that are very difficult to see in action, whether or not I'm doing it or not. And people are, you know, express a great deal of frustration, especially at the Frontier Committee. You know, they want, they want to give me feedback. They don't want to tell me, you know, they don't want me to tell them how to do it. Um, in the sense of what was done in the past is binders were given full of data that shows I'm doing my job. Um, and, and I think Dr. Carey did that, I know Marty Barrett did that, mm -hmm. and I think Marie Regina did that her last year of creating these binders. So what has been asked of me for this kind of trial run, this is kind of the end of my interim year, if you're really, if you're looking at this, where things are kind of lined up, is that I'm gonna create this online form with some bullet points for each of the standards of stuff that we're working on that to kind of trigger, oh yeah, that's right, they're working on it, oh yeah, they're doing that kind of thing. One that it can be kind of streamlined in the sense that I'm not spending three days, when I say three days, three weeks, of putting you know a full binder together with the evidence instead of doing reminder points. If anybody wants evidence to what I'm talking about, that I can certainly provide. Like, did you really, you know, do this capital plan thing? And I can say yes, that's what I'm talking about. So that's kind of where it evolved to at the Frontier meeting last Tuesday. As they said, you know, go ahead and start, you know, create this online thing, but put in. Again, these bullets for each one for reminders where you're at, then people can still go through the evaluation that way. And then what we'll do next year, um, the October joint meeting is all to provide goals, and then we can talk more about this um, this area. And then also leaving an area where we can give give feedback, um, remembering that any, remembering that any feedback given to me is a public document that's done through this evaluation, you're certainly welcome to send me emails anytime about my job performance um, or, or talk to me on the side that you're certainly well to give me feedback. But when you're talking about formal feedback, you gotta remember this is all open documents and that kind of stuff. Um, the nice thing about this is that you gotta remember there's 25 school committee members just tallying all this information and kind of thing. When you do it in the forms sheet, it does it very quickly, you can put all the information together for each heading. Um, it does a nice, it does a nice you know, takes give us some of that labor. Our, in our value, and I, I really want to create something that's useful because the amount of participation in the past evaluation, even when things weren't going swimmingly, was very poor because people were frustrated with the system. So, you know, I want to fall within the confines of the law, which kind of follows this outline, but at the same time, I want it so that school committee members aren't feeling like, you know, um, you know, filling out forms of the, I don't know if he delivered the new curriculum or not. I don't have a kid in the school and I, you know, who am I supposed to ask about that? And feeling like, the, you know, the questions are rigged against, against either them or the me or the system or, because if you read through it, there are kind of, some of them are like, I look at it and I go, yeah. did I? Oh yeah, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't just kind of, it's kind of written, trying to model off to the teacher's evaluation um, and then that's how it kind of evolved. So, and even the teacher's evaluation as I looked over. So when, what's the schedule for dealing with this? So I hope to have, to have it sent out in June to, um, to take. Um, and then we'll tally, tally, tally the results and then have to discuss it in an open session. And that would be not till October or? It's gonna be tough, it's gonna be tough to turn around before June, we can discuss it not before um, September. Um, just thinking of the, the schedule of it might be it might be able to pull it off. It's just a, it's a crazy next few weeks um, with all graduations and all the other stuff going on. Um, it might be something where we present the information at the September meeting. Members can get it earlier, but we discuss it at September, or we bring it to the October meeting. Mm -hmm. Discuss one. But so at what time would we be in the position of having something like this that we would be filling out? June. Before our June meeting, after our June meeting, sometime just independent of our June meeting? Just June. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, hopefully be, you guys are, it'd probably be before you, Jeremy, yeah. Were the okay. 17th or 18th? Yeah, you guys are far enough in. Um, you said something, there was some point earlier this school year, there was a discussion of the evaluation, and I remember <laughs> you saying, I think that you were going to, part of the way the evaluation worked is you essentially would present to us, you know, your summary of the year and, you know, make a case for why you, you know, things you've done. Right. And, so and as so part is of that going to be sort of go by the wayside? And Well, it's in there now. So those bullet points will be the accomplishments I did during the year for okay. insurance standards. Okay. And so I also, um, a member of this Frontier Committee was pressing that, well, just send us, I have a tally sheet of what I do each month mm -hmm. um, that, that's tracked. So all my meetings and all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. that could also be provided. Um, so people can see like you know where I am, what buildings I'm in, who I'm visiting with, who I'm meeting with. Um, um, so that can probably be shared because it's going to go into this. It would be a public document. I'll have to edit names out, but um, you need to like parents and right. Right, that kind of just say like parent meeting that kind of right. stuff. But that's not too important. Okay. So I just think it's important that you know evaluation be done. And I had not been part of a previous one, but I had heard. You know, either comments from some, you know, of like, well, I filled out lots of stuff and then I never got any, you know, they never got any sort of sense that that was even looked at, right. or just lots of people didn't even bother to fill anything out. And, and that was the case so a lot I'm, of people didn't bother to fill out. And that what I heard just being around was frustration with it. Yeah. That this, these aren't asking the questions I want to answer. Right. And, and, we're not doing, and, what, and the point is to help the superintendent do a better job. Right. Right? It's got to be something that can help. You know, if, if it's not, the evaluation is not all about hire and fire. It's right. about, you know, de, you know, guiding the, my development right. and then the development of the district. So, and which direction the committee wants to go. And that's, and it's, it gets, it gets very difficult when there's five separate committees with five different, you know, what's most important. A lot of things are similar, but you know, I mean, this year was a tough budget year right. um, for Sunderland, you know. In another district, it wasn't a tough budget year. You know, the, the budget meetings were 15 minutes in length, where we had 15 meetings. You know what I mean? So it's it's, it's each one is, is different, and so it's kind of finding, okay. you know, as we work together. So, anyways, that's just a that's just an update on. You don't need to vote on this now. You don't. You're not voting on that. Can I pass on an evaluation I heard uh, at the post office? <laughs> From the postmaster, who I said I'd seen a town meeting, but I hadn't said hello to. I said, I, I see you at town meeting. He said, Yeah. He says, I try to go to all of them and so on. And so we started talking a little bit. And he says, one, and he just said out of the blue, he says, One thing I'll tell you, he says, and he says, I've said this to a number of people in here, which is in this case a good thing. He said, I was really impressed by both the superintendent and the principal when they stood up and addressed, you know, things about the school budget and the school and so on. He just said, I thought they were did a real good job, and he says I've been telling some people that. No, thanks. I said, you know, that's pretty cool. Yeah, thank you. Ben does make me look good. Yeah. <laughs> no. I mean, he was being just, you know, we're just having a good discussion, and he was, he was just, you know, he was pleased. Good. So that's good. Well, let's yeah. try to keep it up. Yeah. Um, just the update on the central office changeovers. Um, we already talked about the business manager coming on, uh, or Judy did in June for a series of days in throughout June. Bob Lesko's last day is in the first week of August. And so um, right now I have the um, position posted and gonna do the interviews in early June for his replacement. Hopefully have probably about a week overlap with Bob. It doesn't have to be as intense as the business manager. Um, and Bob, <coughs> You know, graciously, graciously, just as Judy is, is, is doing the same in the sense of he's always available by phone to help the person along. So that's what's taking place there. Um, since our last meeting, we also hired Kim McCarthy as the director of education with the elementary focus. Um, I slightly changed the title of that. If someone looked at that, they said, What's that all about? I'd like to have between Sarah and that position have the ability to do crossover in schools. And so with elementary focus, that's where she's focusing. But if I have to, many times you get into evaluation of a teacher and it becomes, if things aren't going well, it can be more contested. You want to be able to bring in a third party. And I want that to be underneath the contract that you can bring a third party in to do evaluation, drop in the system. And we've done that before. It's just a little bit cleaner when we do it that way. So um, that, was the, that was one of the main reasons behind it, because they do work so collaboratively. So yeah, that's where we're at right now. Do we have 
Oh, Kim's up. Thank you. Um, early childhood. I'm in the final steps of hiring the early childhood um, director as well. Um, it was brought up, and I'd say it out loud. You know, with the changeovers, do we think about reconfiguring as a ways to save and, and that kind of stuff? Um, I mean, we'll be saving money and shifting of salaries as long-term people are leaving. Um, but I didn't see a re way of redoing it with the amount of stuff that the early childhood coordinator deals with. And that job has only increased, and, and Ben's nodding, and he can yeah. probably deals with, it, with the, the person even more than I do, um, in the sense that the, the amount of needs that are coming in with early childhood, um, the amount of special ed and intervention and that kind of thing, um, and running of that is really showing um, the need for that position. So, um, and, and the number <clears throat> of students our early childhood director um, provides support to is uh, more than two of our elementary schools in the district um, and almost as much as as many students are enrolled at Sunderland Elementary School between the pre-k and k programs so it's a, an enormous responsibility it's being it's time being spent in all four schools attending IEP meetings um, helping out with screenings and sometimes the evaluation process and then you know with the now director of education it's it's k through six um, in all four schools so it's they're huge jobs, um, and I, I think you're right in that kind of reconfiguring it um, may not necessarily have been the best way to. Uh, I couldn't see a way to reducing it. You see we're expanding it, but that's not right. the way. <laughs> <laughs> but in, and also, any any early intervention, the better you do a job with that, the, you're going to save money on it, and you're sure. going to do a better job with the kids. So that's important. All right. The. Do you want to do, re Mr. Chair, you want to do reports, then we'll go to executive session, so we kind of skip out to the reports, that way we can... By all means. I don't need to take over, I just done this a lot of times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you're going to do capital oh. projects? What's that? I'm going to the budget one, we're going to go to executive session for the... I understand, yeah. For the, the non-union, oh, the reports. Yeah. Yes, right. Oh, I may have you. Um, my report, it's in the packet. Um, negotiations are still underway. We'll discuss it in one of the, in one of the executive sessions. Um, and um, you can see some of the upcoming dates. There's more dates since I printed this out, so we kind of put that there. I kind of went through the, um, the new people in the central office. The, so there's a new rule. Um, new interpretation of school choice came down from DESE. Um, saying that if you were a regional school, a separate regional school to the elementaries, that school choice do not automatically flow to the secondary level. So a student whose school choice in Sunderland does not automatically get into Frontier. Um, that's not how we've, obviously how we've interpreted that rule. Um, and so looking at the projecting of the numbers over the next few years, I don't see it. it currently, everybody who's currently a school choice student is grandfathered in. We've only had to shut down school choice in the middle school the last couple of years because of some spike numbers that we've had. When I look over the next few years, I don't see it as a, as a huge problem, but um, I've been talking with Mike Morris over at Amherst, um, and Mike has um, taken the lead because um, this is affecting Amherst as well, and we're looking to get a bill passed as part of the, um, as part of the budget. Sometimes they add these bills that have these kind of little effects. This only affects nine districts. There's only nine regional districts that are not K to 12. Mm -hmm. And so that would allow us to make a, um, an agreement with the regional school as an elementary school. So I'm saying we here instead of we. So have an agreement with the regional school that would accept the school choice positions and we put in parameters or whatever within that agreement. So we're looking to get that added to the legislation that's going through now. So hopefully that will go through and this won't be a problem. Um, what it will require me to do is I will have to notify families that they don't, they aren't guaranteed a spot in Frontier this next year's kindergarten class. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so that may, that can affect people. However, you know, looking at the numbers right now, I don't see it as a problem, but I can't predict seven years from now with, you know, what kind of, and what kind of financial situation will be in seven years and that kind of stuff. So I just have to let them know, but I'm hoping, I'm hoping that, hoping that the legislation will pass prior to me having to write that letter, but I've already got a draft of it written, so. Okay, are you aware of it? 
I feel like usually when something like that happens, it's because of a specific incident somewhere. Are you under, are you under any awareness? What you know, I thought it was that they were, yeah, I, I shouldn't say on camera, but I thought the state was out to get us because we've been um, complaining about school choice and school choice reimbursement. So then they kind of got us to school choice. Um, because remember, school choice is really just a Western Mass and a Cape Cod issue and the, the numbers that we're talking about. Um, but when I was talking with Mike Morris again, who called the state to talk about how to get around this, um, they didn't consider this as a problem. And so they actually are the ones who suggested following to get legislation to go through. Because again, you're talking about nine districts, you're probably talking about in those nine districts, because it's a regional the way, it's probably less kids in the school of Brockton. Right. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's not even on their kind of, on their, so hopefully that will be going through. Um, this is a week where the Senate is doing all their work around, and so this is the numbers of everything that kind of failed in the House, so all those wonderful pie-in-the-sky thoughts we had in early in the budget season kind of um, all got shot down. Now we're seeing a bunch in the Senate. Um, we'll see what um, happens there. Um, but right now, you know, Chapter 70 is up, and um, regional transportation um, is at 80%, which is where we wanted to see it for, at least for the frontier. Um, and remember that frontier took on the, the brunt of the new transportation contract, so it's important that for the frontier's end of it, that, you know, the elementary did not take the, the increase to that contract frontier did based because of the, those numbers there. So we'll see what comes out of there. And then the last thing is really a, a um, new warrant thing that's really the rule of the implies to the frontier that you can elect one person to sign warrants from your frontier, which is always a pain in the butt for the regional team. That's all I got. Besides anything else. Thanks, cool. Sure. Um, as part of the early release professional development calendar, each school was able to schedule building-based PD days um, kind of at their discretion. Um, the district-wide, we had Polly Bath come in, who was a national recognized expert on behavior. Um, she provided district-wide trainings, but then also some um, in-house in trainings. Um, we had a group of instructional assistants, teachers, special education teachers, and myself receive an intensive three-day training, um, or training over the course of three days in the fall. Um, and then we came back to the school and led building-based trainings throughout the year. So that was one component of our building-based days. Um, earlier uh, in May, April 26th, excuse me, um, earlier in the year, April 26th, we had our first live reunification drill with our local police safety team. We had done a drill in the fall with just staff members, but this was the first time we've actually um, performed the drill with students and their families. And Roughly 60 students were picked up by parents that day, so that's the number of students who participated in the drill. Um, just the reunification drill is one of a series of safety drills we do throughout the year, which include um, bus evacuation drills, lockdown, shelter in place, fire drills, you name it. Um, and then finally, uh, the last portion of our building-based days this year, we hosted an autism panel which included an SES parent, uh, director of early childhood education, a BCBA um, special education teacher, and an instructional assistant. And each individual shared their experiences in both working and living with students with autism. Um, what we found is that we've had a, um, an increase in the number of students coming in uh, early, early childhood pre-K and K with the autism diagnosis. Um, so the purpose of the panel and then the follow-up ABA training on May 17th was to build our own building's capacity in um, supporting all students and making it um, as inclusive of a school as possible. Uh, any question on the PD trainings? Great. Uh, school lunch program. And uh, I met with Mary DeLusa, our um, director of our lunch program for the districts recently, and we were comparing April 2018 with April 2019 numbers. Um, to date, we've served uh, ele approximately 1,100 more breakfast breakfasts to our students, 
um, 1,000 more lunches. The meals per labor hour has increased from 10.98 to 11.67. Um, we went from $7,921.52 in the negative to a um, surplus of $9,227.84. A large part of that was due to not having to, to pay the significant um, consulting fee um, that we had hit us last year. Um, but then we also have approximately $5,000 in student lunch debt. Um, and that's something that's always there and we, we do send out, um, or the lunch program sends out weekly reminders, emails about balances. Um, and we also have our uh, front, office, front office contact families when um, numbers, uh, when the balance dips below a certain number of money owed, amount of money owed. Any questions on that? Is that, I mean, we've had a number, that number is, has the number been in that ballpark for some time or yeah. is that anything yeah. particularly different one way or the other? No. Okay. No. Yeah. Um, so it's just, I think it's something that we're uh, always working um, with families and, you know, I, I, respectfully, every family is in a um, different financial uh, situation and we need to be um, very sensitive to those to each fa family's individual needs and it, and it can change on a weekly weekly basis um, you know the most important thing is that our students are cared for and well fed and if that means uh, being in the red at times and I think so be it but you know on our end we are making a concerted concerted effort to bring that down right and as you as we shift the her, our portion of Mary's salary into the uh, revolving fund, it will still leave it, if I, if I subtracted her salary from mm -hmm. this, we're still at a plus number, which yes. is what we yeah. want to be. Right. Yeah. yeah. Just where you want to be. A absolutely. Good. Um, if you flip over your paper, uh, important dates coming up. Our Her Horizons classroom on Thursday is going to the Discovery Museum in Acton. We have our uh, Volunteer Day, Community Service Day this Friday, May 24th, Sunderland in Action Day. Um, uh, school Committee Extraordinaire Keith McFarland is leading a CPR class with our sixth grade students on Friday. Not anymore. That's been postponed. I think the class is still going. I can't be a part of it. Okay. The class is still taking place. Um, under his guidance. Under his guidance. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Next week, we have our sixth grade step up day. We have our spring concert. Our, our fifth and sixth grade always um, alternates trips each year from the Sangha Center in Lowell to Boston. And this year, they're going to the Sangha Center. Uh, we're going first grade, is going to the Eric Carl Museum. Uh, ponding for fourth grade at Northfield Mountain. Uh, May 30th, we'll, um, we will ce celebrate our seventh straight year in uh, walk and roll. And that's the day the event is being held. There's other field trips. We have Junior Olympics. Um, kindergarten Visitation Day is June 7th. And um, our on June 12th, uh, that is a, our last morning staff meeting of each year is um, we always do it uh, do a celebration breakfast and if we have any retirees we honor the retirees at this at, at that time um, and this year we are honoring Roberta Jaffe who is a part-time occupational therapist in our building and also Karen Green who's the um, you know community and family coordinator um, that works in all the schools and then also our Director of um, Elementary Curriculum at this time, Louise Law, is also retiring, so she'll be recognized then as well. And uh, last day of school is half day on June 14th. So it's a very busy 17, last 17 days of school. We are running, but who's counting? Yes. Any questions? That sounds great. Yeah. And um, not included in this, uh, these are just 
events basically for our students and families, not included um, are all of the meetings that are taking place right now in the planning for next school year for our teachers so that we're ready to go August 28th when students come back. All right, thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, does anyone, are there any other committees that have met? Um, I, there's a capital committee and uh, just a couple things. The We put in three requests this year and I thought that I was hoping two would get approved. We, one of them was the windows. We were just sort of putting it on the radar screen and not anticipating approval. Uh, the one that did get approved was dealing with the siding. Um, the one that didn't uh, was dealing with stuff, dealing with the oil tank and stuff. And did you get anything from Scott, an email explaining the situation? I said, because I was, I, I was away then, so I couldn't go to the meeting. and. All I understood from talking to Scott was, well, there, Scott Bergeron, the Slackman, um, was that there were, the way he said it was, there were questions about what the long-term plans were there and did we need to be putting this money into something that, you know, who knows what the longer-term plans were. And I said to him, could you maybe, rather than me trying to relay that, because I'm not a, you know, equipment person, it, I don't understand this stuff. Um, could he send you a copy to Bob, you know, what the concerns were? And you probably, I don't think that's been done. Okay, I'll have to get back on him. Um, you know what, <clears throat> people recommend, well, nobody wants a recommendation. Wheatley's, Wheatley did it a new way this year, and it was really the Capital Improvement Committee picked a morning for three hours and they went to all the buildings and they walked through all. And put light eyes on all the projects right. and all the future projects. And I just thought it was really, it was nice to get them in a non kind of this. We got going on here, here. You know, eventually we got to fix that light there. You know, you know, you know, you know those kind of you know, not the light, but you know, right. but and a capital kind of thing. And they were kind of also just checking on the status of all the buildings and getting an idea of how everything was running. And I just, it was a nice thing that they did for the first time this year. And I, well, I, I, I would just say that there's like that. some there's a couple of changes in the works for the Sunderland okay. committee, and one of them is to uh, both change and sort of open up the membership of the committee because it has been basically one of these things like other committees in towns where they are staffed by a representative of the finance committee, a representative of the select board, a representative, and they were supposed to be a representative of the school committee and I've been going to all the meetings except for this one I missed which would happen to be the one decision meeting. Um, but I didn't want to be on the whole committee because I didn't want to have to worry about all the other buildings in town. But they're now changing it, and they're opening. They're, they're like, I think they're they're increasing the membership a little bit because they had trouble getting a quorum, and they're opening it to more like citizen members. But I was thinking of putting my name forward to get on the actually get on the committee um, because I think that would be useful to have a school person on the committee. And then the second thing was that they were talking just at uh, Monday night selection meeting about having a meeting uh, sometime in June to start the process for the coming year so that it wouldn't be taking place at the same time as regular budget stuff. And so there's also always concern about is something supposed to, you know, should something be in the town capital budget or should it be taken care of by the department expense operating budget? Mm -hmm. um, and so getting, you know, and so that may be also, basically there's more time to be looking at this stuff and I'll bear in mind your suggestion there about, you know, I know there's been tours in the past, but actually tours for the specific projects that are being put forward, you know, could be real useful. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I think it's probably good, you know, I think I should put my hand up to get on the committee because otherwise it's sort of like things happen, you don't know about it. I would support you in that regard and it was Doug and I went to the meeting that you couldn't go to and right. there was a couple of things happened with that one. The first thing they asked us was about the specific improvements of all the capital projects that they had done before. What, what was the efficiency was produced, and we didn't have any of that data. Right. So have, being able to provide to the capital committee the data on the success of the improvements that they're paying for is going to be really important. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing was they had asked when it was about the oil tanks, about mm -hmm. why does it have to be underground? Should, are we, are we, might, might we move to above ground tanks so that you don't have, that they're more accessible? Is, is this process or what we have now 
the best, most efficient method going forward, or should we explore? And again, Doug and I couldn't couldn't answer those questions, so that's why I answered. Right. Well, I know I see the year before I made a you know I basically said, look, we got to get Bob to come to the meeting. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and I think exactly. that's clearly the case that you know whoever is going to be Bob's replacement has got to be on board and willing to come and defend the stuff that we're doing. Yep. Um, because that's how you get stuff passed. I explain it. Yeah. Yeah. But you got my vote. Thanks for doing that. Too. Okay. So anyway, that's all for that. I also want to um, mention that building related, um, with one sixth grade classroom leaving and two kindergarten classrooms coming in, um, we are hiring uh, for a new, this will be a fourth grade teacher, um, and we need space. Um, so we're doing moving some rooms around, which includes moving the art room to the current out of school time and music room. That room doesn't have a sink. Um, it doesn't have uh, shelving or storage cabinets. Um, and, and when I say we are taxed for space here, we are very, very taxed for space. Um, you know, we've had uh, just a big increase in student population over the past five years, um, but then also the needs. So we have, um, you know, substantially separate programs that um, need classroom spaces as well. Um, so a couple things in the short term, um, if there are any extra end of year funds, um, I put it out there for discussion that some of that go towards putting in a sink, some cabinets and, and shelving, but then also thinking about the lot long term. And if our current um, fourth grade class in a couple of years where there's just one section um, when they graduate and we still have two kindergarten classrooms coming in, then we really will have no room. Um, so uh, that's a discussion to, to be had. Yeah. And it's, yeah. um, it's, it's important to note. Um, you know, we've gone from one preschool program uh, that had two half day sections to two full day. Um, we've added three classroom teachers. We've added a special education teaching position. So it's, I, I think the growth um, in our student population has, um, has been helped by adding these positions, but at some point we're going to be really short on space. And we are, we're feeling that crunch already. Okay. We need to get deal with executive session because Darius has got to go. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. So we're going to vote to enter executive session and then we're not planning on coming back and we're only going to be no business afterwards. No business afterwards. Right. Okay. So what, we need to have a motion. Indeed. Um, I'll move. Hold on, just is your wording specific? I think. Yeah, pursuant to MGL chapter 38, section 21 to conduct a strategy session preparations for negotiating with non-union personnel. Or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or negotiation, contract negotiation with non union personnel. And then we're also going to go into chapter section 21A3 to discuss strategy in respect of collective bargaining, unit 38 teachers and instructional assistants. So both non union and non union. Okay, and, and I think, Mr. Chairman, we need to have a roll call vote for yeah, each member. Yes, we do. So if you want to do that. Yes. Amazing.